Welcome to We're Talking About Practice. In this episode, we're going to have Coach Steve Collins with us, who coached Wesley Matthews, NBA player. And we're going to talk about his favorite drills on uh, games based practice. So, one on one, two and two, three and three. He's also going to share his favorite rebounding drills. I know a lot of people want to work on the rebounding and also special situations that coaches don't really practice a lot, like taking charges or rebounding out of a free throw situation. So, all this great stuff is in this episode. So, let's get started. Hello, everybody. Welcome to We're Talking About Practice. We have Coach Steve Collins here. Hi, Coach. Hey, how are you doing? So, how about you introduce yourself to, to our audience? Okay, well, I'm a high school basketball coach in uh, cold Wisconsin. Um, I have coached, geez, oh, going on 30 years. Um, have been lucky enough to coach uh, some really good players. Four, four Mr. Basketballs in the state of Wisconsin, which are four guys that were the best high school players in the state. Um, had a handful go play professionally. Um, Wesley Matthews, who I guess, let's see, where's Wesley now? Wesley's with Dallas now, so he's moved around a little bit. Um, so Wesley's had a long career in the NBA. Um, Vander Blue, who was actually an all-star in the D-League the last couple of years, I think he was one of the leading scorers in the D-League this year. So he's this close. Um, and then a whole handful of other guys that have played overseas, a um, couple that have tried in the NBA but haven't made it. Um, and... Uh, have been really successful in trying to give a little bit back to a great game of that I love. You know, I, uh, you know, I've, I've, this game has given me a lot of great things and a lot of things over the years, and um, that's part of the reason I hooked up with you guys and and, and to try to give a little bit back because I think uh, there's a there's a lot of noise out there in basketball world on the web right now. That's what I call it, a lot of noise, and you guys have done a really good job of kind of pulling the noise and putting it in one spot where people can find it. Because there's a lot of good stuff on the web, but it's just when you start doing it, it makes your head start to hurt, to be honest with you. Awesome. So let's dive right into it. So what is your coaching philosophy? You know, it's no accident. You've won all those state championships. You produce all these great players. What is your one thing? <laughs> good players. Uh, <laughs> that helps. But, uh, you know, I, I, I think that a, one really good part about the game, and we were talking about this earlier when we were off uh, off camera. Is I think with with basketball, it's really important to be able to um, break the game down into small pieces. Um, and I see that with four year olds or five year olds when they start dribbling, and I see it as much with my high school guys, and definitely with college game and the professional games, a two on two, three on three game. So I, I think this game is really about the small stuff. Um, the one-on-one, two-on-two, three-on-three games. It's, it's, first of all, where you, get, you don't get lost. You can't hide. You have to be able to dribble. You have to be able to shoot. You have to be able to do everything in the game. And, you know, um, I have a 14-year-old living in my house right now, and a lot of the stuff we do with him is in these small games it's against, my old, <laughs> against my older varsity guys because that's where he can't hide. You know, he plays five-on-five five with them. He can kind of hide and not be involved. Um, and that's why I think it's such an important part of this, of the game, and to be able to break it down into into the small games, into the one on one, two on two, three on threes. Talking earlier about NCAA, uh, NBA, like how you mentioned, it's all small games, right, within the court. So expand on that a little bit. Yeah, you know, if you watch the NCAA's or you watch, you know, coming up in the next couple of months, the NBA finals and playoffs are going to start. The game is just, it's such a, it's its a two-on-two -two game. You know, it's a, for a ball screen for Stefan. It's, you know, an isolation for LeBron. You know, um, you know, I'm old enough that, you know, Kobe or somebody like that, you know, you, we'd ice, they'd isolate them. And and they're not four guys on one side of the court. It's, it's a small part. So, drills that can break that down and kids like it because they touch the ball more they get to shoot more they get to attack the rim and they get to work on their game you know um a lot of the drills not only the drills that i have on, on coach base but all the drills that are on coach base you know are working on not only team stuff which is important the whole part but the individual part working on that working on the skill you know the ball handling the shooting and and when you do small games you have to be able to do those skills or you're going to get just eaten alive. And that's, I think that's why you see that, you know, the McDonald's All-Americans or those kind of kids have played so much basketball. And it hasn't all been five-on-five five, um, because, you know, how hard it is to get five-on-five five at the park or in the gym that they, they're just playing two-on-two. Two. They're playing, 
you know, 20, the old game of 21 or the old game of, you know, cutthroat where you just, you get a free throw and you get to shoot. I mean, all those games just teach the, teach it so well that it's, it's, I think that's the key to, to skill development and the key to kind of broadening your Euro step or your crossover. All right. So let's say I want to incorporate these games. I'm a beginner coach. Um, yep. What are your, you know, kind of favorite drills and how you progress and, and yep. show, so, share some of your secrets. <laughs> yeah, some of the secrets. So I think, you know, especially at the younger ages, uh, ball handling is the is, is if you're if you can handle the ball before you're in middle school, you're you're like, you know, Stefan and a little. I mean, you you can dictate the game because the ball's in your hands and kids' de- developmental skills, their ability to defend, their ability to do that stuff. If you can dribble the basketball really at a young age, um, you can dominate the game. Now, that changes as you get older because people have ways of stopping you. But um, those that's a skill, especially with the younger elementary kids, that's the first skill I would work on. I would work on ball handling. Um, and, again, there's tons of coach-based ones on uh, as far as ball handling, like wall dribbles are, are some of my favorites. Um, some two-ball stuff, some of the two-ball stuff I have on is great. Um, cause I'm a math teacher. I, I, I'm a basketball coach, but I'm also a math teacher. And anytime you can do two balls, you know, you're working twice as much. You're working not only in a strong hand, but you're working on not so strong hand. I hate calling it the weak hand, but you know, you're working on both of them at the same time and all that two ball stuff, all that, all, all that stuff is so good for, for development. So that would be the first thing I would work on. Um, so I'd break it, I'd break up out of practice into small pieces. I would work on ball handling. For the younger kids, shooting would be the last thing I would work on because a lot of them aren't strong enough, and you know it's this it's a shove rather than you know the good form. So um, my son, um, gosh, I'm trying to remember. I think it was seventh grade or sixth grade was the first time I let him shoot a three. Seventh, he, he's yelling from the other room. It was seventh. So it was seventh grade. So and his form, if, if we could put him on camera right now, his form is very good um, because he didn't have to do this. Um, and I think that's so important for youth coaches to not do that. So you got to think about how small a nine year old is. And if you think about it in terms of perspective, it'd be like you and I shooting on a 13 or 14 foot hoop, you know, how would we have to shove that up there to get it up there? Um, so I think that's, that's a skill that I think we develop too early and every kid wants to do it. And that three point line, I'm not a big fan of it. I think it ruined some kids shots early um because they want to you know there's gold out there they want to be able to do it and they're not strong enough they're not ready to do it um so in my camps and when we do things we close we lower the baskets and get smaller balls which helps but um so i would really work on the ball handling first and the next step would be i would do a lot of one-on-one because everybody's involved at all times um once they get to middle school you can slowly develop that into two on two three on three um, but especially at the younger ages, I would do a lot of one-on-one. Um, and then you have to, you know, you have to contain cause you're, it's the teacher and me, you have a wide range of abilities. So maybe this group can only take two dribbles and then they have to shoot, or this group can only work on their left hand, or this group can, you know, has to shoot only bank shots. So you can always neutralize it. Um, the good thing I think about kids playing by themselves outside of practice is they tend to make up rules that, that balance it because it's no fun playing three on three when um, one team's always winning. So what kids do is they figure a way, and I've, and I've read books on this, they figure a way to balance it so it's even because it's more fun. You know, It's like the old Sandlot game where a couple kids couldn't hit the baseball. Well, we better do something so at least they have a shot at it to make it more fun. Um, and I actually saw it in my own gym um, during the season when my son came in and he was playing a couple of my varsity guys. Well, obviously he's 14, they're 18. His game's not quite as good. So they, they figure a way to balance it. So, you know, they put him on a team where, okay, we're going to put these two or three guys. So it will be balanced. So it will be competitive. Um, and as a coach, I think that's really important. You know, when you're scrimmaging, when you're doing those kind of things to balance the, 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 don't always put your starting five, maybe put two of your starting five and then put, so you balance it so it's more competitive. Um, but the progression would definitely be work on ball handling first, um, then slowly progress to the small games, work on one and two, two and two, three and three. Um, 
especially at the elementary age, I would keep it as simple as possible offensively and defensively. Um, and then, you know, you can slowly, like we were talking about, put plays and things like that as they progress. And if you have an advanced elementary group, you can definitely do that. All right. So give me, uh, put you on a spot. Like what, yep. you're, 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 you're kind of like favorite one-on-one, two and two, three and three drills and like the variations you include, right? So I don't know. Is it like King of a Hill and like, just like, uh, yeah, you know, I've on an cold angle cold. or, yeah, um, so one of my favorite one-on-one drill is kind of where you where you have to. I, it's called my cone drill, where you put a cone down and you got to basically one guy has to go around a cone and you can move them all around the court. You can make it. Um, I I use chairs sometimes, but um, where one guy has to dribble around the the cone and the other guy has to just run around the cone to defend, and then that's where you can really bury it up. Ooh, I've got some good kids. I can move that cone so they have to dribble, so it can allows the defender to get in. Um, we do that drill and I don't know if I talked about it in the, in the one, uh, the clip that I gave you, but we do that drill, um, where they have to take charges. So we actually work <laughs> on charges. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and that, and maybe that's something I got to send you guys, but there's a, there's a knack to taking a charge. There really is about, you know, the pre-flop is what I call it. You know, the, how am I going to protect myself and how can I pre-flop? Um, cause most I don't know in Europe and stuff if they have the semicircle anywhere but college or the but um, you know we have that semicircle in, in in the U.S. as far as where it can take the charge. It's not down in the high school level, so you know we can take a charge anywhere um, right under the basket. But um, so that's my favorite one-on-one drill. Um, my favorite two-on-two drill is is again a cones, but I use two sets of cones. So they again they have to work around and and I'm doing that too because I'm really trying to balance it. Um, uh, so then three on three, I like a no dribble three on three where we play three on three and you can't dribble it. So once you check the ball, um, there's no dribbles. So, yeah, so it, it makes it interesting in the sense that it becomes about spacing at three and three a little bit more than two on two and one on one. Um, so once they enter the ball, they can't, so they have to, you know, the ball screens aren't going to work, uh, you know, and the game has really shifted to a lot of ball screens, um, so I like doing things where there aren't ball screens. You know, I'm like, I want to go in the other camp. Um, so they have, how can they get open? Well, there, there's two other guys in the court and two other defenders. They got to they got to work together to get open because this guy's sitting here being defended, can't dribble. So the de- defense knows that. So they're going to pressure him. Um, so it works on a lot of different things on, on that level. Yeah. So spacing is, is tough to, to teach, right? Cause like, Yes. Naturally, you throw out a ball in the playground and it just all clump together. It does. It does. So, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trademark this right now. So if anybody comes up with this invention, but there literally needs to be something where they put vests on if they get too close, it flickers or something. <laughs> no, I'm dead serious. It's the same in soccer and other sports. It's all about spacing. And, uh, you know, or maybe a shock, something that shocks them if they get too close to each other. But like a vest that would light up if they got too yeah. close. Um, but something like that. So yes, it's really about, you know, I'll stop practice when, when they get too close. It's like, all right, stop. Look, can you touch the guy that's next? That's not because you want to be able to create space. Um, so when I'm doing the three on three and two on two stuff, I'm not quite as worried about space because they have a half of a court. Um, but you definitely, when we expand it onto the four on four, five on five, all of a sudden, you know, becomes that kind of clumped, you know, follow the leader kind of thing especially at the younger ages so like and and uh, like any principles of like how to maintain spacing like if i want to explain to my uh players oh maintain spacing they don't know what that means like is there, they like, don't they don't they don't so, so they, what does they it hire, mean? yep so w- while my so when we're playing two on three four on four or five on five the way i explain it is you pass the ball you have options okay your option is cut away your option is screen away but our rule is about 10 feet. If you're closer than 10 feet to your opponent, you're probably, you should move away. Um, now, this is all going to depend on what kind of offenses you run, if you run the swing, if you run motion, if you're running dribble drive. But most of them have that 10 foot, that's what I have found is about the 10 to 12 foot space. Um, you know, they know that. That's, you know, you can grab a yardstick and take it to practice too, you know, three or four yardsticks or meter sticks would work. But if you're that close, um, that is, that's my cutting point. Um, so my progression with that is, 
um, we do it with four on four and we, we will, we'll make a pass and we'll give them like three seconds and we'll stop them. And then we'll say, all right, it's like, you know, um, I even forget what the game is, but it's basically, you're just freeze. You become a mannequin and you'll see where you are. Um, and then that will allow them to kind of see, okay, spacing's good. Should I have, I passed the ball. What should I have done? Should I have cut away? Should I have screened away? Um, and then that's where I try to get away from no ball screens because they, they can do that. They do it when they play, you know, two on two and three on three enough. Um, so we don't allow ball screens when we're working on spacing. Cause then what that's doing is it's bringing a defender to the ball. So we don't allow that. We have, you have to do something other than ball screen. Um, and again, especially at the younger ages, give them two rules. Okay. You pass the ball, you're going to cut, you're going to screen away. That's it. Um, the simpler you can keep it, you know, the kiss method of teaching, keep it simple, stupid is, is easy. So you can't give them, you know, the 18 layers of read and react because <laughs> they can't do it. Um, okay. They just can't. It's, you know, my high school guys have a hard enough time with, with yeah. all that. All those layers are just, I mean, it makes my head hurt right now thinking about it. So you give them two things, you work on those two things, get good at it, and then you move on to the next. Um, it's the math teacher and me, you know, you work on adding and subtracting, and then you worry about multiplying and dividing. So for all those youth coaches out there, try to keep it as simple as you can. Give them a couple set of rules as far as spacing goes. And then once they have those two rules, then go on to the next ones. Okay, now maybe we're going to double screen away or we're going to work, worry about, you know, here are our five bases. You know, you can worry about all that stuff after they get the simple stuff down. Okay, sounds like when you're playing three and three, you have like a specific theme. So you have a theme for spacing. And in order to do that, you just pass, no dribbling. Let's say you want to, like, what are the themes you sometimes throw out there? For, 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 or for doing small game stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. like the no, like the no dribble stuff, we work on types of shots they take. Um, we talk, talk, talk about how many passes they have to make. Um, you know, I, I'm a big believer in the bank shot. So sometimes we will play, th we'll, we'll play three and three until someone can get a bank shot. Um, I think it's a lost arc. Uh, so so you know, why bank shots? Why, why do you think? That's important. Well, and I haven't done a lot on bank shots as far as videos yet, and I'm going to have to do that. But again, I haven't taught geometry in probably 20 years, but that little square on the, that never moves. And if you hit the right spot with the ball, it's going in. You know, it's it's all the you know um, all those smart basketballs that are out there now. You know, the Wilson X and all the other ones. You know, they basically what are they talking about? They're talking you know the no. I think it's the old Noah which basically talks about the arc of the basketball. Well, it's the same principle with shooting. If you hit a specific spot on that board, it's always going to go in. Um, it's all, it is. I mean, I'm surprised we haven't seen a three point bank shooter yet. I, I am. I really am. Um, because if, if, if you practice it enough, it's always going to go in and it wouldn't matter how much pressure you get. Um, it would be a really difficult shot to get good at. I think, and there's some velocity issues, but <laughs> I, I, I mean, I'm just surprised we haven't seen it. And That's we have, and we've lost the mid range game. You know, I don't know your philosophy on that, but you know, what are people doing now? They're shooting layups and they're shooting threes. Um, so that mid range 12 footer, if you can bank it, it's a pretty good, consistent shot. And I'm old, you know, so I, I, I remember the days when everyone shot bank shots. If you were at an angle, it was a bank shot and it always went in. Um, so we do that, uh, you know, my guys still fight me on the bank shot, but, um, we'll do things where, you know, you have to set a ball screen before you can score or everyone's got to touch the ball three times or, you know, um, an offensive rebound is worth two points rather than one, you know, or, um, you know, cause usually when we play these games, we, everything's worth one. Um, so we can do those kind of things. You know, I, my teams have always rebounded really well. So, you know, we, ha we always in practice, which I think is important. We always emphasize what we want them to be able to do. And crashing the boards is, <laughs> is something that everybody can do. Um, and there's a lot of points to be had. I said, that's selfish time, you know, offensive rebounds is selfish time. You get the ball, you can shoot it as many times as you want. I don't care. You know, it's not like the continuity of our offense and, Johnny, you shouldn't shoot that shot because that's 12 feet out of your range. Um, but if you get an offensive rebound and you're two feet from the basket, yeah, you're going to shoot it. Go right back up. So um, it's such a 
game of it's such a game of um, five guys kind of working together in a dance. But there are times where you can be selfish. The free throw line, you can be selfish. Offensive rebounds, you can be selfish. Those kind of things. So you brought up a great point. Rebounding. Like, that's one of the biggest requests we get. Like, rebounding drills. No one seems really? to have oh, great... It's rebounding drills. I got tons <laughs> of rebounding drills. Okay. It seems like... Yeah, so share. Like, how do you develop a great rebounding? How do you develop... Well, first of all, it's got to come from in here. Right. Um, you got to emphasize it. I mean, there is definitely a scale... There are some, you know, watch a Michigan State team. They all he he recruits offensive rebounders. He just does. I know, I know Izzo, and that's what he does. And he, he the gritty kind of guys that just go after it. Um, but there are there are, you know, you basically have to emphasize it in every drill you do, and you have to reward the kids that that do it. Um, and the way you reward them is you tell them you got to play on their egos a little bit that, you know, this is a spot where you can get points. If you get the rebound, you get to shoot again and you're going to get to go to the free throw line because half time you're going to get fouled when you get that offensive glass. Um, it also is um, a lot of heart and a lot of effort. It's hard work to go off after that offensive glass. Um, the defensive glass is a whole different ball game. Um, <laughs> the, I, a great story. We're, we're in the, we're our playoffs, and we're in the uh, the round of thirty two, I think, in the state. And we had been we played a team that had a seven footer, and we were and we were big. We you know I think this year we started like six seven six 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 six, which is pretty big for a high school team. And we rebounded the ball, but we were really concerned about it. So we worked all week about rebounding, and the ball should hit the floor. Ball should hit the floor. You should everyone should box out the guards to the point where the ball would hit the floor. And we got really good at it at the end of the week. The first, th- first three or four possessions we come down, they shoot it. The ball hits the floor and hits the floor again. No one went and got it. So I didn't teach them to go get the ball. I just taught them to box out and have it hit it. So, um, so that's a good drill as far as, you know, you know what we do too. And we have, um, we have them outside the three-point line. And they can move anywhere they want. And then we have a manager or one of my sophomore team kind of shoot the ball. And then the object is they got to try to let the ball bounce once. If it bounces once, they get a point. If it bounces twice, they get two points. If it bounces three, they get three points. There's great drills like that that, you know, it's hard. We, we've only had a handful of times that have bounced more than three times because you got to box out like no tomorrow to be able to do that. So, but okay. yeah, I didn't know. Rebounding drills, I'll get you some rebounding. Yeah. Like so, rebounding. so what are, what are your, your, your like uh, finer like tips on like, uh, boxing out do you believe in just like checking the guy finding the nearest guy and, and just like p- put your arm out or you like full box out or like well, what's the deal like how do i teach okay, so out there's a couple theories so it depends on um were you a guard when you were playing yes yeah so you probably didn't box out a lot you were no. like me yeah, yeah yeah so so for my bigs it's it, there's a there's a there's a sliding scale everybody needs to go find a body so they need to turn and find a body in my theory now, if you have a 42-inch vertical, I give you a little bit more leeway because you're going to go get rebounds before they're rebounds, and sometimes space is better for you. Um, I, have one, I have a kid on my team right now that, that I give him a little bit more leeway because he would get a rebound before you and I could get the step ladder out of the hmm. garage, get on it, and then go get it because he's going up and getting them before there are rebounds for anybody on the court. So he gets a little bit more leeway as far as, as checking out. Um, but the nuances of it is I really believe that you have to go find a body. You literally, I mean, if it's turn and find them and then box them out, or if it's go, go, you have to, there has to be some sort of contact. Um, because as the person trying to get the rebound on the, on the inside, the defensive rebound, you want contact. Now, if you're the offensive rebounder, you don't want the contact. You're doing everything so he doesn't know where you are. Um, because that's where you can create space and I call it kind of the step back. Yeah. You're not going to get this rebound step back away from him and then go one way or the other. And if you can do that, holy cow, you know, that that's where good offensive rebounds going back to your other question. That's where good, really good offensive rebounds. You're not always pushing, um, that contact you're, you're eliminating the contact and then it's creating space for you to be able to find it. Um, the good ones can actually move 
people under the basket. Like, you know, we, we had that issue early in our season where it's like, all right, you're going to get the rebound, but you're only going to get it when the ball's coming right through the, you know, that, that offensive rebounder has pushed you four feet under the basket. You're of no use to us at that point. So, um, but as far as, as far as drills and stuff, um, you know, I would, I would, I, I think a drill that a lot of people don't do is they don't get their kids on the free throw line and actually have people shoot free throws and box out. Mm. Um, you know, it's a it's a skill that's a lot. We, you know, we'll spend three to five minutes a week on that. Um, you know, here's how we're gonna here's how we're gonna box out. Here's how we're gonna try to get the offensive rebounds. You know, we we run plays out of free throws where you know we'll have a chess co- we'll have different calls where okay, this time you're gonna go screen the other guy, or you're gonna zigzag, or you're gonna crisscross, or you're gonna go inside and the other guy's gonna spin. So it's a spot as a as a coach, if you want um, a little bit of an edge, which I'm always believing, if you can get just a little edge, free throws is a spot that you can really work on. You, you know, a lot of you that are watching this are s- smarter than me, but you know, you can come up with little different tricks as far as you know calls or plays or things you can do on free throws that really work well. I mean, because nobody spends any time on it, to be honest with you. All right, so we're on a topic of. This is interesting because you're practicing things that a lot of people don't really practice, like rebounding out of a free throw. Like people assume you know, but they don't practice it. Uh, and then also you we practice, talk- we practice, excuse me, we practice, we practice down three with two minutes to go. We practice up 15, talking about the NCAAs with four minutes to go. We, you know, we want to, we want to stay title when we were down. In 2011, I think we were down eight with less than a minute to go, and we just started fouling and hitting shots. And it, you know, you have to kit, put kids. We practice the jump ball, and there's only one of them because we want to be able to score on that initial possession. So we run plays out of that jump ball. Um, you know, one great one which I can kind of describe here is you know you do the jump ball. You put if you're going, let's say you're going this direction, you're going to put two guys down here on the three point line. So you're going to drag defenders from the other team down there, and now we'll we'll tip. We'll set a screen for the tipper, and you know he can either go to the basket or, especially if you have a, a center that can run, or you'll score every time because no one's practicing. How I many? How much time do you pr- spend in practice on the jump ball? Nothing, and you don't work on defending it. So if you if, again, that's the little nuances that can separate winning a game and losing a game, and especially with a practice. Planner, that's that's a, definitely something you want to do and put in your practice plan. So there's three things that already I don't do. I don't practice uh, taking a charge. I don't <laughs> practice free throw rebounding. And I don't practice and jump. Give me one more. You've got one more. Like maybe like uh, tell me when uh, people miss uh, out and and you think is important. One more that's really good as far as the uh, let's think. Um, so I I work on free throws in stressful situations. I don't know. Do you do that? Um, so I will put them like in, in the in one drill that I do is I'll put a kid on a free throw line, he'll shoot a free throw. If he misses, the rest of the team runs and he doesn't run. So the pressure is he doesn't he doesn't want his teammates to have to run and him just stand there. So I really try to put pressure situations because think of all the games in the in, down the stretch that are so important. Um and what do they usually come down to? They usually come down to what we were talking about. Can you take care of the ball? And can you make your free throws? Um, so that is a that is something we spend a lot of time on. You know, I don't spend time in practice shooting 155 free throws, but I will spend time putting them in situations like, okay, game's tied, you miss this, everyone runs, or you know, there's all sorts of situations that you can put them in as far as free throws go. Um, but I'm sure I, I mean, I'm sure if I thought about this, I could come up with all sorts of other stuff. I some of the stuff I just do on a daily basis, so I can't all of them off the top of my head. If we sat here and talked for another three hours, I could probably come up with a bunch more. But Yeah, so, that, no, that's great stuff. So I think, I think we're just going to stop here. Uh, okay. I, there's, we're we're going to go forever. Uh, oh, we go forever. But, uh, but I'll set some of those up. I'll make some of those videos in the next couple of months, and we'll get some of those up for people too, some of those free throw ones. That's a great idea. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, when we get off, I'm going to write that <laughs> Because I, there's stuff that I do that it would be like, great, here, here's what we do on a free throw. Maybe you could try this, you know. Yeah, so thank you so much, Coach. 
Uh, yeah. I, no, we would love to interview you some other time and pick your brains Perfect. on another subject. There's a lot of stuff already in this episode. There's so. too much here. I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much. You're welcome.